friends it is very important to remember when we know the definitions and the meaning of the word we can relate to it very easily i'm i want to mention this uh, i'm going to give you definition not just to uh, make it um, kind of uh, scholarly and uh, uh, very classical and uh, literal uh, uh, talk <laughs> i just want to mention this uh, in order for people to understand why this word is used why it is called metta mitra is a friend in pali mitra is sanskrit mitra also is uh, used for the sun sun that uh, controls this whole uh, whole uh, solar system uh, makes us uh, uh, or keeps us alive and have this uh, greens all over and gives us warm and so forth that sun is called mitra mitra i think it is called mitra because it is very warm sometimes too warm <laughs> similarly when somebody cultivates this uh, uh, loving friendliness the person is very warm all the time the person's heart is warm in uh, uh, our everyday conversations we say when somebody is uh, very loving we say is he or she is a warm hearted person this because of this um, um, this attitude however in uh, pali tradition referring to the buddha uh, buddha is said to have a, a cool heart described uh, describing the buddha uh, pali uh, scholars say karuna sitala hadaya panya phajyot vihat mohatama sanara mara loka guru vande tam sugatam gati vimukti that is the buddha is karuna sitala hadaya his heart is soft soft and cool panya phajyot vihat mohatama he has wisdom to destroy ignorance so he has uh, loving friendliness here the word uh, uh, karuna is used for compassion you know when we talk about uh, loving kindness uh, compassion naturally flows into loving kindness it's almost impossible to separate loving kind uh, loving kind or loving friendliness from compassion these two always go together when we try to cultivate these two these two separately we find it very difficult although when we can define these two loving friendliness as one and compassion as another uh, i give you those definition later on but in uh, in practice it is almost impossible to separate these two so when we talk about the buddha his about his loving friendliness also is called sometimes compassion so uh, i think it is uh, necessary for people over there to say the heart is cool maybe because they are in a very hot countries <laughs> you need cool heart here <laughs> it is very cold so you need warm heart 
to compensate. <laughs> <laughs> However, uh, because the sun is so warm, ones who have warm uh, feeling or loving feeling are called warm-hearted people. And also, this uh, loving friendliness, just like the sun light, uh, is absorbed by individuals depending on their own state of mind. Sometimes sunlight is absorbed, some objects absorb sun uh, stronger or more than other objects. Similarly, some people receive loving friendliness and accept it and uh, accommodate it uh, and live with it more easily than others. For some people, uh, cultivating or receiving loving friendliness is very difficult. For some people, very tiny little thing is enough to melt their heart, to accept loving friendliness. And this is another characteristic, another aspect of loving friendliness. Some people cannot recognize, cannot accept it. They remain very uh, very much distant. Metta is not something that we can uh, <coughs> inculcate in somebody's mind. But metta is in everybody's heart, everybody's mind, everybody's life. There may not be any living being who does not have the root of metta, loving friendliness. All living beings have it, even animals have it. Sometimes um, in uh, uh, Pali uh, uh, texts, uh, to illustrate the power, the strength of uh, loving friendliness, uh, animals' uh, friendly, loving friendliness or animals' love is used as as an example. For instance, um, I don't know how true it is, but the example is very very strong. A cow once was uh, nursing her calf, her baby. At that time, somebody uh, shot an arrow to her. And because of her, uh, utmost love for the baby, for the calf, the arrow did not hit her. I mean, whatever it is, the reality is that cow at that moment is full of love. When she uh, nursed her baby, she is full of love. That means even that cow has it. According to Buddhist tradition, there is no being who is totally void of loving friendliness, true, deeply rooted loving friendliness. Most human beings don't know that. They don't know how much love, loving friendliness they have, the root of love they have within themselves. It is buried under the rubble or heap of defilements, hatred, anger, resentment, disappointment, and so on. It is buried. Therefore, we have to develop this, cultivate this purposely. Only when the mind and body is totally relaxed, in the relaxed state of mind and body, this loving friendliness begins to manifest. It is just like when the earth is very rough, dry, no moisture at all, seed won't go there. On rocks, seeds won't grow. When the earth is soft, full of moisture, and then we can grow seeds there. Similarly, this thought, this root of loving kindness is in us. And we have to unfold it, 
we have to give it a chance to grow by relaxing. When we um, talk about uh, Buddhist meditation, no Buddhist meditation can has been uh, recommended without the practice of loving kindness or loving friendliness. I use the word loving kindness as a habit, but I prefer using loving friendliness because uh, the word metta is friendliness. So to make it uh, stronger, uh, more powerful, uh, we use the word loving as well. So we, we should call it loving friendliness. Loving friendliness, I say, cannot uh, um, inject into somebody's mind or cannot inc inculcate in somebody's mind. Every individual must independently cultivate it. However, depending on sometimes, depending on uh, uh, circumstances, environment, uh, conditions under which we were brought up, sometimes in some situations some people cannot discover it because of the family situation, upbringing situations, uh, uh, neighboring conditions and uh, various type of uh, educations and so forth. Uh, certain conditions can suppress that, make it weak, but nobody can totally eliminate it from somebody's mind, just like nobody can completely uh, implant it in somebody's heart. It is not something that we implant. It is something that we have within ourselves all the time. And we have to find a way to bring it up, develop, cultivate within ourselves. The Loving kindness or loving friendliness is the basis of our survival, of our existence. If we do not have that, we can be extremely cruel. If we do not cultivate it, we can be cruel, very wicked, very mean. But even the wicked, apparently wicked person can be uh, uh, can, uh, once the person finds it out, turns into be a very soft-hearted person. You all remember the very famous story of Angulimala. I don't think there is anybody who does not know that story. To summarize the story, for the benefit of those who don't, who don't know it, let me give the brief summary of the story. Angulimala's name was Ahinsaka, the, pair, the name given to him by parents at, at his birth or soon after birth was Ahinsaka. Ahinsaka means innocent, one who does not hurt others is called Ahinsaka. And that was he, he was that, he was innocent person. When he went to the school, boarding school, he happened to be the, the best in the school and every boy or boy in that school was jealous of him, naturally. And they fabricated a story against uh, him and poisoned his teacher against him. So the teacher did not believe the students for a while, but when uh, they kept on repeating it again and again and again, teacher also began to believe. This is why I said one day in my one of my Dhamma talks, uh, don't believe in any mere hearsay. When you hear something repeatedly again and again, even if it is something completely wrong, without any basis, you may believe it when you hear it again and again and again, like this, like commercials. So this teacher eventually was convinced that Ahinsaka was a bad boy. 
the story was that uh, he was uh, having an affair with his teacher's wife. That was the story they, they fabricated. So naturally, the teacher, had, the teacher was very upset. And he could not um, kill him in the school because if he did that, that was very bad reputation for the teacher. So he plotted a way to kill this boy. At the end of the schooling, everybody went to give him some gifts. This boy didn't have any gift. But when he uh, went to the teacher, he said, All right, only gift you can give me is that you bring 1,000 fingers, human fingers. Make sure when he was going to leave, yes sir, he had never killed even an ant because he is an innocent boy. Now he has so much love for the teacher, love, respect for the teacher. He would do anything that the teacher asked him to do. So he said, yes sir. When he was going to leave, he said, but remember, bring one finger from one person. You cannot cut all the fingers from one person. You can get one finger from one person to make him make the task very difficult for him. So that one of these thousands of people will kill him. That's what he thought. This boy took a sword and went into the street, went into the jungle and uh, uh, waited on the way when people, when he saw people coming, he ran and ki killed them and got their fingers. At the beginning, he did not, uh, did not count the number of uh, fingers he had. He put here and there and some got rotten and animal ate and so forth. So finally he thought he was so desperate. He thought the best way to keep the count of the fingers is to make a garland out of these fingers. So he made a, he killed somebody, got one finger, put in a, in a string and hung it around his neck. See the amount of uh, trouble he went through just to show his respect, love, reverence to his teacher. And finally, of course, uh, when he had killed 999 uh, people and one day, last day, he was going to kill his mother. And the story came out very quickly and uh, Buddha came to know about it and uh, out of Buddha's own love and compassion, he intervened. He went and uh, stopped Angulimala and uh, immediately Angulimala threw away his sword and surrendered to the Buddha and the Buddha brought him to the monastery and ordained him. Now, anybody listening to this story might think, without knowing the background of the boy, might think that Angulimala was a cruel person, wicked person. He wasn't. He was a kind boy. In his heart there was loving kindness, loving friendliness gentleness, softness. But this is how he was conditioned by somebody, by the teacher himself. As soon as he became a monk, his true nature came out. He became, immediately he became an arahant. One day he was walking with his arms folded in his hand, and he heard a woman, he went to a house, stood in front of a house to get uh, arms food. While he was standing there, he heard a woman crying in labor pain. She had a difficulty in delivering a baby. This man's heart melts and he did not know what to do. And he went to the Buddha and said, I went to such and such a house, I heard so and so is crying, he labor pain, I cannot bear it. Sir, tell me, what shall I do? No, if he was a cruel person, he wouldn't have this kind of thought. He was very gentle, very kind, very compassionate, full of love and 
respect for life. Buddha said to Angulimala, you can do something very good for this woman. Go and tell her, standing in front of her house, tell out loud to her, since I was born, I have never killed any living being. Then Angulimala said, Sir, how can I say that? <laughs> I have killed 999 counted. I don't know how many more I killed without counting. And how can I say now I have never killed? But remember, what I mean is, since you were reborn, born again Buddhist, <laughs> you see, when since you were reborn as a monk, you have never killed anybody. Remember that much. And go and tell out loud, Jatoham Bhagini Arya Jatya Jatu Nabija Nami Sanchichapanan Jivita Voropeta. Go and tell, sister, since I was born as a noble Aryan, I have never killed any living being. By this power, by this truth, by this act of compassion, may you be relieved from your suffering, from your pain. Actually, this worked. He went and standing in front of her house, he repeated this again and again. This woman was so taken by his voice, his sound, his words, his compassion, and naturally she gave birth without pain. And since then, this is what is called Angulimana Sutta. Even today, in uh, Theravada Buddhist countries, when uh, <coughs> women are pregnant, monks are invited to their house, and they recite this, this sutra. We do it even here in America. Sometimes women come and uh, you know make little offering, puja, and take precepts and so forth, and ask us to recite the sutra. And we uh, <laughs> invariably recite the sutra. Now, my reason for bringing out this is to show you that sometimes people appear to be very cruel, very wicked, very mean. They are not that wicked, that cruel, that mean by nature. They have been made to be cruel, wicked and mean. Not one single person. There may not be one single person who wanted to make somebody cruel, wicked and mean. But many factors in society, many factors in education, many factors in religion, many factors in society can make a person wicked, mean, unkind. So, loving kindness or loving friendliness is in even in that person's heart. That we got to recognize. When we practice loving kindness, therefore, don't try to preclude any being thinking that so and so is so mean. How can I practice loving kindness towards them, towards so and so? We should not think that way. However, <coughs> the practice of loving kindness begins from oneself as you we all know, as we all do it, we start it with ourselves. The reason why we want to start with ourselves is not that we want to be selfish. If somebody, selfishness is this, when we practice loving kindness only to ourselves and say, may I be well, happy and peaceful and never say anything about anybody else, that is selfishness. If we practice loving kindness only to oneself, if I practice only to myself and stop there and don't share it with others, then it is selfishness. But with the intention of sharing it with others, I must cultivate it within myself. When I cultivate it within myself, only then do I know the impact the power, the strength, how relaxed, 
how comfortable, how peaceful I feel. And that I want to share with others. Also, why we want to cultivate it within ourselves, and uh, Buddha also mentioned that. He said, Sabbadisa anuparigamma chetasa nevajjaga pietar matano kvachi jasma pio putu atta paresan tasman hinse harang attakamo. That means, I have surveyed the world to see if there is anybody who loves others more than oneself. And I have come out with none. Nobody, nobody loves others more than one loves oneself. If somebody sometimes out of, in a fit of passion, may say, darling, I love you more than I love myself, that is an utter lie. <laughs> that is not true. You must say, even in the situation, you must say, darling, I love myself more than I love you. <laughs> that is the truth. But sometimes, uh, in some situations, people don't like to say that. <laughs> So, Buddha said, and therefore, since you love yourself more than anybody else, you must feel the impact, the power, the, the feeling of love for yourself. Only then you can share it with others. So, he gave us a very beautiful advice to practice loving-kindness. He said, divide all living beings into four groups. All living beings into four groups. In the first group, the first group is the smallest group. That is, I. <laughs> I mean, it is so small, even in language, it doesn't, it doesn't take too much space to write. <laughs> it doesn't take too much time to say. It is one syllable, one letter, and it is very easy to say, and the word we use, 96% of our conversation, if we talk, <laughs> if we talk one hour about something, and 95-96% uh, uh, times we use this word, I. I say so, I, I do this, I think so, I did this, I, yeah, 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 I, I. So, start with that I. Cultivate loving kindness, develop it, make it uh, strong, and fill your mind and, and body with this thought of loving kindness. When you are totally, completely, almost saturated with the thought of loving kindness, friendly, uh, loving friendliness. You cannot contain it. Then it may begin to ooze out. <laughs> then, then include the next individuals or next category of people. Next category of beings are your loved ones. They may be your uh, your sweethearts, uh, your boyfriends, girlfriends, parents, teachers, brothers, sisters, all whom you love. Include all of them. That is the small category. <coughs> Second uh, large to the first one. Or larger than the first one. And then very easily you can <coughs> spread that loving kindness towards them that loving friendliness towards them. Of course, sometimes some people have difficulties in sharing it with anybody. But 
once they begin to feel the impact, the power, the strength of uh, loving kindness towards themselves, then it is not difficult for them to include all their relatives, friends and so forth. <coughs> and then keep thinking of them, developing this. And then include all uh, beings in the largest category. The largest category means all other living beings. They may be human, animals, divine, uh, you know, demons and uh, whatever. All other beings. Then, <coughs> fourthly, bring the last small category of beings. Who are they? They may not be too many, but still uh, there may be perhaps more than one. That is your adversaries, unfriendly beings. Unfriendly persons means they, they don't belong to that uh, largest category. The largest category, uh, the being belonging to the largest category are the ones you don't know. You don't know them. But those last beings in the last category are the ones you know. <coughs> Somebody who, who has, whom you had never seen or heard would not become your adversary. <coughs> it is said, Nakastit kastachin mitra, Nakastit kastachin ripu, Vyavaharena mitrani sanjata ripuastata. Nobody is anybody's friend, nobody is anybody's enemy, but only through association, through contact, somebody becomes a friend or adversary. Therefore, the last category of beings are the ones whom you happen to know, happen to associate with, and therefore they turn out to be your adversaries. And therefore, since it is difficult for many people to develop loving friendliness towards them, share your loving friendliness with them, very difficult, you start with yourself, go to the friends and relatives, and then all unknown beings, and then come last to the beings you have become, you know, who, who, who are your adversaries. Still, some people find it extremely difficult <coughs> to share loving friendliness towards them, with them. They say, how can I? We have, formula, we have made a little uh, formula of uh, sharing loving friendliness. In that we say, <coughs> may my May my unfriendly persons or enemies or adversaries be well, happy and peaceful. May no harm come to them. May no difficulties come to them. May no problems come to them. May they always meet with success. Let me stop here. <coughs> then people say, <coughs> all right, suppose I have an adversary, an enemy. He is planning to kill me. Should I wish him success? <coughs> People can come up with anything. <coughs> so, in fact, uh, <coughs> even then, don't withdraw your loving friendliness. Even then, you wish him success. <laughs> In fact, what it means, we don't mean all, all this um, um, superficial uh, uh, success or material success. Whenever we say success, we mean uh, spiritual success. Our adversaries are not successful spiritually. That is why they are our adversaries. If they are spiritually successful, they would never become our adversaries, our enemies. 
somebody who cannot <coughs> cultivate this wholesome thought unfold their own living friendly thought turn out to be sometimes unfriendly in their attempt to develop it we must wish them success our wishing their whenever we say may they be successful we always mean may they be able to uncover noble qualities within themselves may they be able to liberate their mind from all psych- kind of psychic irritants may they be able to have peace comfort may they be have able to have a noble uh, thought in that may they be successful we don't wish people <coughs> uh, to be successful in uh, uh in uh, <coughs> doing something wrong uh suppose somebody is our adversary <coughs> why he or she is our adversary because that person as i mentioned earlier in angudimala's case the person was brought up very under very unfortunate situation very unfavorable situation and therefore unfortunately this person turned out to be having this frame of frame of mind you know if i have an adversary i wish him success in attaining liberation attaining enlightenment if he attains enlightenment he won't be my adversary anymore then my work will be very easy he won't get in my way to hurt me he i don't wish him to <coughs> have pain suffering and so forth i wish him to be peaceful and happy i wish him to be liberated from his psychic irritant so that he will be peaceful he will be happy he will attain liberation if somebody becomes our adversary <coughs> it is because either the circumstantial reasons or the person has some mental problems he's a patient do we get upset angry with patients or do we have sympathy compassion loving friendly thought towards our, towards <coughs> patients we should cultivate loving friendly thoughts <coughs> towards those individuals therefore <coughs> without any reservation without any second thought when we cultivate loving friendly thought loving friendliness we must include them uh, just like anybody else without any hesitation after all people ask <clears throat> i want to mention these things uh, in advance before you ask me these questions people think if we cultivate loving friendly thought is that going to uh, affect other beings for instance we wish um, so and so be uh, well happy and peaceful and so forth uh, would that person be peaceful and happy <coughs> by our wishing or may they may say in that case it is very easy for us to eliminate all sufferings in the world and sit in one place and say may the world be <coughs> peaceful and happy the world will be peaceful and happy just like a magic all we have to do is to sit in one place and say may all the wars in uh, uh, what do you call uh, S- serbian war <coughs> in <coughs> yugoslavia <coughs> in all those countries where there are wars we sit in one place and say may all these victims of wars be well happy and peaceful and then all will be peaceful and happy people ask this question friends it is not going to look, work like that <clears throat> even while buddha was alive 
while buddha was uh, sharing his loving friendly thought every single moment not one day or two hours a day or three hours a day every single moment buddha's mind was filled with loving friendly thought no other thought in his mind <coughs> whatever thought he had was the thought of loving friendly peaceful calm happy altruistic thought never had any main <coughs> thought in his mind and therefore it was it would have been very easy for the buddha to eliminate all the wars in his time even buddha could not do that therefore we have to be very practical <coughs> when we practice loving kindness or loving friendly friendliness we have to be very practical this loving friendly thought works for those who practice it <clears throat> you know if we all practice we all cultivate this loving friendly thought our minds will be filled with peace and happiness we will be relaxed we will be comfortable we gain concentration and so forth and also when we associate with others through our association with them they learn they become relaxed they become comfortable they cultivate this friendly living thoughts if we direct this <coughs> towards someone we know very well in a very difficult situation we we direct our thoughts towards that person directly that also might work but this is not going to eliminate world sufferings but this will definitely help us to relax and remove our own hatred and uh, resentment from our own mind so the in the <coughs> final analysis we practice this thought of loving friendliness for our own for ourselves in uh, <coughs> uh, maha satipatthan i want to mention um, uh, how this uh, is, is, has been uh, uh, introduced by the buddha and where and when this should be uh, developed <coughs> every time we meditate we must start with this thought of loving friendliness within ourselves <coughs> in order to make our meditation whether it is tranquility meditation or insight meditation meaningful to be successful in that practice loving friendly thought must be cultivated loving friendly thought <coughs> is not actually limited to thoughts it manifest in our words and in our actions i think <clears throat> i can give you some examples uh i tell you very simple story <clears throat> i think this story uh is not something unique each and every one of you can come up with similar stories from your own life because my story is uh, related to my mother since we all had mothers have mothers and we all have this kind of experience probably we all might have had this kind of experience with our mothers sometimes you may not remember <coughs> but uh, we all have when i was almost 7 years old <coughs> i lost my eyesight i i became night uh, blind that means at night i could not see anything no matter how bright light was there i could not see anything at night when my mother <coughs> put uh, rice and curry and so forth in my plate 
and put it in front of me. Uh, I just, um, you know, by feel or touch, I just take it and <coughs> otherwise I don't know what is there. So my sister, my uh, sisters and brothers, they were, you know, a couple of years older than me, few, few years, still very young, didn't understand. They wanted to tease me. They thought I was, um, you know, playing fool to get attention from my mother. <coughs> what they said, they did was they put some, uh, you know, this coconut uh, husk and so forth into a plate. <laughs> when my mother put my plate in front of me and goes away, horrible. <laughs> so I cried. So my mother would come and uh, find the problem and scold them and put my uh, place of uh, plate of food in front of me. However, this went on for some time, <coughs> and mother, my mother was so desperate. She was uh, she worried more than myself. Just such a she's such a wonderful benevolent uh, angel mother mother to me. <coughs> So she consulted a native uh, medicine man and got some uh, prescription and she made this concoction and made into some kind of paste. Now making, collecting these uh, herbs and uh, pounding them and making them is not a problem, but feeding that to me <laughs> was the problem. So she is so full of love, she devised a method. In the morning, <coughs> she would bring me, put me on her lap, near the, in the kitchen, near the fireplace, cooking, cooking place, uh, cooking uh, store. We don't have this gas or electric stores. We had these certain, you know, rocks, put the tree rocks and put the firewood and all the ancient uh, uh, stone age uh, cooking method. <coughs> so, uh, she would sit tight in front of that and put me on her lap and she was so sweet. She would tell me all kind of beautiful stories. Uh, she would uh, kiss me, hug me and poured her love on me. Why? In order to win my heart. <laughs> Why? In order to feed this medicine. See? Otherwise, I would not eat. So when she did all this, I became so melt and so soft and so gentle, I would do anything she asked me to do. <laughs> At that time, she put this very bitter medicine <laughs> in my mouth. <laughs> no sugar, no honey, just bitter medicine. In fact, <clears throat> out of love for her, I would do anything. So I swallowed it. You see, I think this is a wonderful act of loving kindness, loving friendliness. There was no other way that she could feed me that bitter medicine. And as a miracle, in about six months, I got my eyesight. And thanks to her, I still have very good eyesight. So, Loving friendliness <coughs> manifest through our acts. You know, in this place, in the Bhavana society, I, I am surrounded by people who have full of love, loving friendliness. Some, uh, whenever somebody wants to build a kuti, they not only go build a kuti when everything goes over, one person uh, I don't want to mention people's names. Build a road. Arrange the road, br bring mulch and arrange it nicely so that that person, that he, he doesn't uh, live in that kuti. That kuti may be built for a woman. But he makes the road. In addition, when the kuti is being built, he goes and builds it. Help others to build. Do everything with others. At the end, he makes a rod for them. He doesn't ask others to do it, he builds a rod. Others <coughs> don't live in this building. They stay in their kutis. And that wood store, 
need firewood. In the very cold nights, several times before they go to bed, they put firewood there so that I can sleep in this house, in this building comfortably. Sometimes I am the only one, sometimes another monk are the only two people living in this building to make it comfortable. And this meditation hall comfortable, women's building comfortable. He puts firewood several times a night. If he cannot do it, he gets somebody else to do it. And he is so much concerned about our well-being, our happiness, our comfort. And there are others who always go around looking, find, finding something to do to make this place comfortable. There is somebody here who always, when a visitor comes, he goes out and goes out of his way to help the visitors, to make the visitors comfortable. So, when I think of all these people living here, I think they express their loving, friendly, uh, loving friendliness in their action, not only in the thought. So this is how I, I feel very uh, uh, fortunate to live in a place like this because of their uh, loving, friendly thought. So loving, friendly thought is not limited only to sitting meditation. <clears throat> they, uh, we, we, we should express them, express them through our words, through our action. Only then, loving friendliness becomes e- extremely effective, no matter how long we think of loving friendliness in our own mind. Unless we put them into action, they are not effective. And therefore, uh, in order to make this meditation practice, or in order to bring, bring this into, into life, into effect, uh, to produce its power, we must put them into action through words and deeds. So friends, <coughs> I think this may be enough for Dhamma talk. And tonight, if you have questions, you may write down. Uh, questions, uh, put in the box. <coughs> So we will try to answer after the uh, questions and answer period. Period, as I mentioned last evening, uh, we play uh, tape for as long as you like to hear. Maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. There are several beautiful uh, sutras. At the at the end of uh, uh, questions and answer period. <coughs> Before we play the tapes, I tell you the the story about the story behind the tapes. So now I don't want to tell the story behind the tapes. I leave uh, leave you uh, now to um, continue your meditation. Perhaps you may do walking meditation now.